Empowerment is authority. It is a sign permission slip to actually seize the day. It's the process of getting stronger and more confident and more engaged. And to be empowered is to move through the world without any kind of fear or any kind of apology. And with these gifts comes an even deeper privilege, I believe, and that is the ability to take charge of your own life, to own yourself and claim your rights. And here's what I know for sure, that to whom much is given, much is expected. And I have been given so much. I've earned it, I've been blessed with it, but I've been given a lot. And that's why I've chosen to use my life to lift other people up. Nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble, we all have setbacks. If things go wrong, you hit a dead end, as you will. It's just life's way of saying, time to change course. So ask every failure, this is what I do. Every failure, every crisis, every difficult time, I say, what is this here to teach me? And as soon as you get the lesson, you get to move on. If you really get the lesson, you pass and you don't have to repeat the class. If you don't get the lesson, it shows up wearing another pair of pants or skirt to give you some remedial work. And what I found is that difficulties come when you don't pay attention to life's whisper because life always whispers to you first. And if you ignore the whisper sooner or later, you'll get a scream. Whatever you resist persists, but if you ask the right question, not why is this happening, but what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? It puts you in the place and space to get the lesson you need. My friend Eckhart Tolle, uh, who's written this wonderful book called A New Earth, it's all about letting the awareness of who you are stimulate everything that you do. He puts it like this, he says, don't react against a bad situation, merge with that situation instead, and the solution will arise from the challenge. Because surrendering yourself doesn't mean giving up, it means acting with responsibility. I have a very big life, and so people with big lives can do big things. And so I started to think about what was the best Christmas I ever had in my life. I grew up poor, on welfare with my mother for part of my life. And I remember that the best Christmas of my life was when I was 12 years old and my mother had said, we're not gonna have Christmas because we can't afford it. I remember feeling like it's gonna be really hard on Christmas morning to go outside. What am I gonna do when everybody else is outside? That's what I thought. What am I gonna do when everybody else is outside? And what am I gonna do when I have to go back to class and say I got nothing? So that's what I was mostly worried about. And then some nuns showed up. Some three nuns came to our house and they gave me a doll and they bought us food and we had our Christmas. That was the best Christmas of my life because somebody remembered and I wasn't going to have to be the kid that said I got nothing. So I wanted to be able to create that same feeling for children who had nothing. So I decided to go to South Africa. Originally, I wanted to do a million kids because I thought, we can do a million kids. And then just realized with, I only had four weeks vacation. So in four weeks, I could not reach a million kids because I didn't want to just write a check, send a donation. I wanted to be able to look in each kid's face and say to that child, somebody remembered you. And so that's what I did with my life this Christmas. I took 41 people from here, hired another 50 people over there, and we were a traveling caravan from one village to the next. We did 2,000 kids a day. We had parties for children who were uh, orphans. And it was singularly, I will tell you, I could weep thinking about it, the singularly the best experience of my life. The singularly best experience of my life. The first day in Africa, where we had 280 kids in a room and every single one of those kids had lost a parent. Every single one of those children, they were aged three to 17 in that room. And my team that you're talking about, I have the greatest team in the world. My team in the, here in the United States had been in contact with the orphanages so that by the time we got there, we had a present with every child's name on it. This summer, Every black doll manufacturer in the country had sent me dolls because these girls had never seen black dolls. And so it was my mission to do for them what the nuns had done for me, was to let the African girls see a black doll. 
So I wanted every girl to have a black doll. I wanted every boy to have soccer balls. We bought radios, we bought clothes. And the most important thing is we had their names on every box for every child. And I called up the children one by one. And when those children, you know, received their gifts and then waited for the next child to receive their gifts and said, I said, nobody can open their presents until everybody can open their presents. And on the count of three, when I counted to three and those children opened their presents, was the single greatest moment of my life. I have a big life, so I can take 50,000 presents and do that over and over and over again to orphanage after orphanage. But what I felt in that room for those, from those kids is a lot of what you're talking about and what you're talking about and what you see in the faces of those women. When you look into the eyes of someone and you give them a gift, whether that be a physical gift or it be a gift from your spiritual self, from your presence, from the essence of you, and you see the light, you see the joy. What I felt in that room was not just that I was remembered, that the child felt that I was remembered, but you felt a sense of hope, a sense of validation that somebody cared about me. And I will tell you that of all the years and shows that I have done and every theme for every show that I've done, the single common denom denominator that I found that every human being is looking for is validation. Every single person needs to know, wants to feel that they matter, that they matter. And what happened in that room that was the greatest day of my life, I knew that those children knew in that moment that they matter. And so I encourage you, it's exciting to be able to write a check. It's even more exciting to be able to touch one life, to be able to do that for one person. It's like Cynthia was saying, when you can do that for one person, when you can do that, you will know that your life has meaning. And I will tell you, when I left that place, my, my friend Gail and I were there and we were all boogling and we're like, and Gail was saying, what is it, what is it, we're so full. Cool. As Gail said to me, she said, you know, as big as your show is, as big as your show is, what happened in that room seemed bigger. What happened in that room seemed bigger. And that is true. That is true for me who has this big life in a television show. And I'm telling you for everybody here, extending yourself beyond your world, your kids, your family, your stuff, and reaching out to somebody who is not like you, somebody who is like you, who is in need. If you are feeling depressed or you are feeling down or you're feeling like things aren't going the way you want them to go in your life, the way you turn that around is to reach outside of yourself to somebody else. It will change you. So it is my intention, my intention to fulfill the dream of the creator. It is my intention to live to the highest calling and be pressed to the mark of the highest calling that I have come to do. And when you can ask the Creator, ask that which made you you, what is your dream for me? I guarantee you, instead of you trying to define the dream, what is your dream for me? If you're able to lean into the dream that the universe and all the forces of light and love and power and grace by all the names that we call God has for you. Nobody can touch you. Nobody can touch you.